Carrie Brister, NAMI's Chief Program Officer, and I want to cover a little bit of housekeeping before we actually get started. Making sure you all know that you are muted. The only people who have the option of unmuting are the panelists, so don't worry about your microphone. We've taken care of that for you. Also want to let you know, if you're new to these webinars, and if you've done these before, then this won't be a surprise, we disable the chat for the Ask the Expert webinar. We have such a wonderful attendance in these sessions that we had people say that it was distracting for them to try to keep up with the chat and pay as attention to the presenter. So it's not anything wrong with your computer. We've disabled that part. But we do want you to ask questions. So you have the Q&A pod you see at the bottom where you can submit your question. If it disappears, don't panic. We have a team of our colleagues on the back side of this webinar who are capturing the questions as they come in so that we're able to share them with our presenter after the presentation is done. The call is being recorded and we'll be posting a link to the presentation on nami.org backslash ask the expert. We want to make sure that you see that you do have the capacity to enable closed captions if that's helpful for you. After the, e after the email, excuse me, after the presentation, we'll be sending an email to everyone who registered for this event that will have a link to the recording as well as the certificate of participation. Additionally, we'll have a handout or two about some related information that we'll be sharing from our NAMI team. Now, if we can go to the next slide, please. All right. We want to remind you if you need, and it may actually be the next one, if you will. Is there the one about needing help? There we go. We want to remind you that if you need support during today's presentation or at any time to remember that you're not alone. We want you to feel free to connect with the NAMI helpline by phone, email, chat, or text. On behalf of NAMI's CEO, Dan Gillison, NAMI's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Ken Duckworth, our board, our board president, Judge Joyce Campbell, I want to welcome you to this December episode of NAMI Ask the Expert. This one is specifically focused on the impact of sound and music. This topic fits nicely with the recent release of the NAMI Hearts and Minds program. And when uh, Christina and, and Hagen first introduced me to our presenter, I was I was just I was blown away. So many things that that uh, it's I think you're going to be fascinated. So we're glad this day is here. And if we can go to the next slide, it may be the title slide. I hope. Oh, there we go. I'd like to introduce our speaker before handing it off to him for the presentation. Dr. Sagaya has been a professor and head of neuroscience in the Burnett School of Biomedical Science, the College of Medicine, University of Central Florida since 2004. He's also the chair of the Multidisciplinary Neuroscience Alliance of UCF, an honorary professor of INDICASAT in Panama, the University of United Arab Emeritus, UAE, and a visiting professor at Tohoku University in Japan. He moved from Japan to the U.S. as a postdoctoral fellow for the Mayo Clinic in 1992 when he was a lecturer at the Science University of Tokyo. He was then promoted to an associate consultant in 1994, then became an assistant professor of the University of Illinois at Chicago in 1997 and was promoted to an associate professor with tenure in 2002. He invented IPS cells in 2004, a year before the Japanese group filed their invention, using overexpression of embryonic stem cell gene, NANOG, I probably butchered that, so I apologize, from adult stem cells. He received the National Honor Plaque of Panama for exceptional contribution to neuroscience based on his study on stem cell therapies for neurodegenerative diseases. His research has been reported in the Washington Post, BBC, NBC, ABC, and other media worldwide. 
He teaches a seminar on music and the brain at Burnett Honors College, which always fills up. It looks like usually within the hour that registration is opened. So you see why we're so excited about having him here and would like at this point to hand it over to you, Dr. Sagaya, and we will see you on the other side in the Q&A. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, too much introduction. Very nice. Thank you. So I want to talk about the music and the brain today. But before that, uh, you know, what is the sound? What is the music? Please think about it. So then the, for the music, mm, you know, uh, like uh, they say that music, but uh, those music could be just a noise for me. All right. And then the noise and the music, that's the personal things. But the interesting uh, uh, here is that uh, even 45,000 years ago, they made an instrument like a flute. And then the, this flute has the octave, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do, right? So those octave. And then the, that's interesting. We are still using the octave in our society. So maybe our brain made for the octave, although the such a taste of the music and then the noise could be personal things, but the, those basic music recognition or the perception of the music could be quite similar. Next question is that music only for the human? Maybe not. Like this Finch. Uh, yeah, he's using the uh, stick to capture the uh, worms in the hole of the tree. Okay. Yeah, and the human think human is the only one animal use the tool, but obviously he's using the tool. Not only that, he used the music. He's singing to attract the females. And then the Darwin. He found those singing and the musical ability, musical ability is very important for those uh, 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 creatures to attract the uh, female. So that uh, uh, if the good singer, if he is a good singer, he can, you know, uh, leave his uh, 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 kids more than anybody else. So the, what the music can do. Change your ability of the uh, percept time. Okay. Now, for example, the uh, John Cage made a four minute 33 second. That's crazy. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, the performer comes up and then the open uh, a score and then the score doesn't have any notes, meaning that much of the time just silence. If you put it in the silence, if you're in those silence, huh? maybe you feel so long, 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 long time. But on the other hand, like this uh, uh, Flight of the Bumblebee, uh, Limus, Limus he called Suffolk, he made that. Yeah, so then the, the time is about the same. But uh, if you listen to something like this, you don't feel it's time. Another example is that. Another example is that uh, uh, when you drive, long drive, you might switch on the radio. Or uh, these days, not the radio. Maybe the uh, USB or, you know, those uh, digital music things. But if you have a music, if you have radio or uh, listening to uh, music or something, you don't feel the long drive. But if you don't have those, the drive could be long. And then the, like a shopping mall or the any, you know, store. They use the music. Although, you know, maybe it's soft, so you may not recognize too much, 
but they always having a, a, such a music, not the silence. And then the, that's the way you forget the time and spend more money in that kind of shop. Another way to use the music, uh, lipel. That's interesting. Okay, so then the, like a, a New York Central uh, Station. They used to have the, uh, unfortunately, the homeless people hanging around and then the, but certain point, they started putting the classical music. So the classical music, they didn't feel comfortable with it. So then the, uh, now the station is uh, clean, clean, uh, no people hanging around. Another way to use the, uh, this is the sound in the bookstore. You might recognize if we are young, uh, some of the bookstore having a very high pitch sound, very high, high, high. So like my age, I don't hear it because the human uh, hear the, uh, from the two, two, uh, you know, uh, two kilohertz, two, uh, 20 uh, kilohertz uh, sound. And then the high pitch sound by the Asian, we lost hearing. So then the, those high pitch sound, we don't hear. Like a dog whistle. That's the extreme case. But the, the, uh, in the bookstore, they put uh, such a sound because young kids, they just pull the book and start reading it. And then they, they never buy it. So uh, those uh, young people, they can listen to it. And then the, it's just a noisy uh, uh, you know, thing. So then the, they don't want to stay there. But the, for the senior people, we don't hear, so we don't care. Uh, you know, we can use those things, uh, so many uh, things. Uh, this is not the human, but the, like a mosquito. If you uh, go to the camp and then the, uh, worry about the mosquito, sometimes you uh, carry the small uh, things, which makes the uh, high pitch sound. Do you know why? Because the, the mosquito biting you is the female. The male, they don't bite. And then the particularly the female before lay egg, before mate, before mate the, you know, uh, uh, sorry, right after uh, mate with the male. Those female, they need uh, a lot of nutrition. So then the, those female start to uh, uh, bite you. But, the uh, the small instrument making a, such a sound, that's a sound for the a male uh, a frying sound. And then the, those male frying sound, after the mating with the male, the female doesn't like to have male anymore around. So then the female go away from the sound and then they're not going to bite you. That's the trick we are using it. Well, uh, and then the next thing is the music can fool your mind. Fool your mind. Okay. Uh, this is not the music, but the, the visual uh, trick is much easier to understand. Which one, A and B, which one is the darker? If you don't know this trick, everybody say A is darker than B. But the fact is that this A and B, they are same. Because our brain assume the things in the shadow. You see the pillar and then the that making a shadow. Okay, so then the things in the shadow is looks darker than the outside. So that's why they we believe, oh, A is darker. Our brain just assume it. Here, again, I just put the uh, color. Of course, this color looks darker than this, but uh, if I move it, I didn't change the color, but I just moved it. And then you can see it's much lighter, okay? And then the, this is very famous things. He's going up, 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 going up, up, up. 
never ending. Okay, this is uh, just an illusion, visual illusion. But we can do the same thing with the music, sound illusion. This sound always going up, never ending. We can repeat again, 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 forever. Okay, that what happened was this. These two sounds octave apart. Now, because the, uh, this sound is bigger, larger, I mean, uh, more, you can think, okay? You are listening this sound. And then the, now you are listening this sound. But always going up. Because most of us using the relative pitch. So we are comparing this sound and this sound, this sound, this sound, this sound, this sound, and then going to hear, comparing this, 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 that. So that's the way always sound going up. Okay. Another thing is that, uh, uh, yeah, this is a very famous uh, Dali picture. You can see the uh, torso of the Venus here. Also, you can see the face of the Mata doll uh, fighting bull. Even you can see the bull here, right? The eye, nose, and then the horns. Although, you know, the it's not the perfectly drawn, but your brain, makeup, try to make sense. If I say we have a dog here, can you point out? Yeah, some of you might. This is the dog. Here's the head, forearm, limb, uh, hinder limb, and then the tail, right? Like a Dalmatian type of the dog right there. But uh, the dog just, you know, draw as the uh, dots. Still our brain recognize as the dog. Yeah, something like this, okay? The definition of the uh, triangle is three angles. So if we have a three angles, almost you can see the triangle here. Same thing for the square. You can see here, right? And then the, here, there's no sphere in the middle. But your brain tells you there's a sphere and the panda bear without, uh, you know, closing out. So then the other brain try to, you know, make, try to make sense uh, based on the, such, uh, you know, the information. Okay. We can do that uh, things with the violin, the sound. Okay. So then the violin bridge is like this uh, 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 bented, not the flat. So that means the uh, prayer, they can pray only two strings at the once, at that time, right? At once. So if they, you know, push hard, 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 they may be able to uh, pray three strings, but no way to pray four strings. But the Bach, this is the very famous uh, uh, Bach, uh, Chacon. And then the, he asked to pray four notes. Right? Four notes at once. Yeah, four notes everywhere. Okay. Yeah. So then the, why that happened? Because the, your brain uh, has the, some, uh, you know, short memory, like a movie. When you uh, watch the movie, the your eye having a previous uh, image memorized. So then the when the uh, picture coming so quick, your brain connect each other and then the seems like it's moving. 
So then the same thing could happen. Okay. The sound memorized a little bit. And then the, during the, such a short period, the next sound comes in, uh, your brain connect each other. And also that, these are in the harmony. With the harmony, you, yeah, in the harmony, the, when you start hearing like this sound, two notes, and then they start hearing the third, and you expect this sound to be prayed. That's the harmony. So then your brain is comfortable guessing the all four notes. And then the, if the violin is pray fast enough, then your brain say, uh-huh, ah, yeah, that's the four notes, harmony. Okay, so uh, music can tap into your emotion, obviously, the emotion, fear, music can make a fear, and then the many uh, things. Oh. This could be fear. I like the motorcycle, but I don't do this kind of thing. So, this is very funny. And then the music can enhance those feelings. All right. So then the, those uh, uh, things, emotion, we are using the part of the brain called amygdala. Okay. And then the, uh, this part of the uh, uh, a brain is very important to uh, save our life. They call it the uh, amygdala uh, reflex. Uh, if you look at the uh, dark cave or something and something came out, if it's tiger or something, then the amygdala recognize, oh, that's so dangerous. And then the make a response like a freezing or the uh, run. Those things uh, happen without thinking. That's the reflex, because the uh, you know those sensory data comes into the brain, and then the such information uh, goes to the, the cortex. Our cortex uh, uh, taking so much time, so then the, it's too late. <clears throat> Sorry, it's too late to respond. No, the easiest uh, example is that when you touch something hot. Always you pull the hand without thinking. That happened in a, even not the amygdala, that's in a spinal cord reflex, right? But uh, if you don't have that kind of reflex, you touch the thing and then you feel those sensation got into the brain and start thinking, oh, I'm touching the hot stuff. If I don't pull my hand, I might get burned. Yeah. That's already you got the ban, burn, right? So then the, that's the uh, things. So uh, the amygdala can do that. And then the, uh, that's the emotional sen center. But not only the uh, amygdala, like these uh, uh, things, all this uh, sweets, money, you know, the, yeah, catering, boob, you do things uh, uh, make you feel, uh, you know, happy. Those things acting on the center called the uh, pressure center, right? So then the, uh, already we know that uh, the, the drag, illegal drag, increase the dopamine in those area. And then also the music can do the same thing. Let me explain a little bit uh, detail here. So that's the part called ventral tegmental area. That's the uh, middle of the brain, okay? Yeah, here's the dopaminous neurons. And then the, if dopamine is activated, 
and that goes to the nucleus accumbens, which is here, and then the, send the, such a signal, previous signal all over the brain. That's happened. Then you can uh, feel the reward. Yeah, pressure center also called reward center. Okay, that's the pressure pressure things. And then the, if we have the little bit, uh, you know, the more high class, I, I, I hate to say that, but, uh, you know, mm, yeah, even a sad music can give you the, the reward, feel, you know, nice. And those things uh, goes to the amygdala. And then the amygdala send the signal to the hippocampus. Hippocampus is the like a CPU to your brain. Uh, you know, uh, it it's a center of uh, making the memory and so on. And then the, that's a hippocampus sending a, such a reward signal. And usually, usually, these things suppressed by the uh, GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid. Okay, and then when you drink alcohol. This GABA things, that's suppressed farther, and then the suppression go away. That's why the, if you drink uh, one shot or something, the people uh, start doing uh, crazy things because this center got so much activated without the suppression, okay? And then the encephrine, uh, encephrine is the endogenous opiate. And then the illegal drug opiate also can suppress this GABA. That's the way the dopaminergic system activated. So music also can do the same thing. Music can increase the dopamine and activate this uh, part of the brain. Okay, so this is the uh, Mozart. say that's the happy music, happy, happy music, right? So then the, when you're listening, your brain respond like this one, ventral pigment area, straight area. Okay, and then the nucleus uh, combat, nucleus caudate in this case. Yeah, so then the happy music just going straight to the such a reward happy thing. On the other hand, uh, uh, I maybe I need to skip how a authentic bit. he got everything to sound. Uh, and uh, no. no, I couldn't. Hmm. All right. Uh, uh, I, I couldn't believe how authentic he got everything to sound. Just uh, a and, second. Uh, and I said, I John, wh where, where did it come from? And he said, well, he said, I had some practice with Fiddler on the Roof and so on, and, and everything just uh, uh, came uh, very naturally, and, and right. that's the way it sounds. I don't when have a good control. I right. play for Schindler's List. Yeah, Did you give it like a he said, thought? Cinderella's Wrist. So then the, when you're listening to such a music movies. like a Cinderella Wrist, no, that never occurred to me because you can the, see the, that that's a sad the song. Subject of that the makes the activation so of this uh, uh, amygdala. And then I felt that and I then the hippocampus area. Contribute uh, simply by you know this music, the right? And Cinderella's Wrist. And, and then the, that's the movie of that history. Sindra was a gentleman tried to help the uh, Jewish people. But the, he couldn't help all the uh, people, obviously. And then the, this is the music uh, for that movie. Yeah, I still remember this movie was black and white. And then the, only the color was the uh, small uh, girl uh, in, in the red. But anyway. Okay, so like this music activates a different part of the brain, as you can see here. But still, you feel some kind of reward things. Okay, a little bit switch the gear. Uh, this is the, uh, we call a uh, pachinko parlor. You can find in Japan. Uh, this is uh, something like a slot machine parlor. Uh, they bet the money, and then the, uh, when they win, they get the money. Okay, 
and then they're in there, they play like this music all the time. Because, yeah, even uh, uh, they lost with this music, they don't care because this music activates such a dopaminergic system a lot. And then they bet the money, bet the money, bet the money. So, fucking power get more money. They knew that. By the way, this music was made for the uh, Japanese Navy during World War II to encourage the soldiers. Alright, another thing is that uh, our brain is lazy. That's the story I want to talk about. You know the consonants and the dissonance. The, we like the consonants. We don't like the dissonance. From the you know, baby. Uh, if we give the consonants music, dissonance sound uh, to the baby, like a three months old, two months old, the baby always face to the consonants. They, you know, don't like the dissonance. Of course, the, uh, you know, the, if we have uh, always consonants, that's boring. So then the sometime the musician, uh, I mean, the composers, they use the dissonance to make a punch or something. But still, we, our brain like the consonants. So uh, if we put the one sound on a, a Y axis, another sound wave to the X axis, and then the, we check the crossing point of those waves. And then the dissonance, they're, uh, you know, seeing each other so much everywhere. Major seventh, wow, so much, you know, crossing point. But the, the uh, consonance, it doesn't have much of the, is such a crossing point. So then the brain is not necessary. Brain, you know, doesn't have to do this so much processing to uh, recognize this sound. So then the, that's the reason that uh, we like the uh, consonants over the dissonance. Okay. Uh, music can make you a better communicator. Why? This is the PET scan. Okay. Uh, this is the resting stage. And then the bottom is uh, somebody uh, listening the language. You can see uh, this part, left side of the temporal lobe, side of the brain got activated. And then the, when we, we listen to music, right hand side of the brain, or the same part of the brain activated, we call this area language center. So we have a, a, a language center on the left, and then language center on the right. We have uh, two pairs of the language center called Broca's area and Wernicke's area. Those are the language centers we have on the side of the brain. But interesting enough, language and the music, they use the same part of the language center to recognize their uh, such a input. Yeah, you can see here, if somebody listening language with the music, music with the lyrics or something, then the uh, both cyber brain got activated. Yeah, so then they, uh, because of that, this happened. Uh, ask the, the people to find the error in the music and in the language. And then we compare the musicians. Okay. And then the, in the adult, of course, the strong error, uh, everybody can tell. So no much, you know, the people having a problem, but the weak error, music, of course, the, with no musician like me, very hard to say, oh, that's something wrong. Okay. But the musician can do the same way the language musician can recognize the slight, uh, error. Okay, slight, you know, the difference, but the, the uh, non mutant difficult. And then, the, uh, you know, that's also happening in the kids.
dyslexis. Uh, these people, very famous people, Winston Churchill and then the Albert Einstein and so on and so on. And then the, if you have any of these uh, symptoms, maybe you have a dyslexis. I do. Anyway, okay. And then the, the those people having a hard time, even a strong error recognition. They have a uh, you know hard time. But the after music training, only music training, painting training doesn't do this. Only the music training, we can fix such a problem with those people. You may know that uh, Einstein, Alba. He was the, a very good violinist, a violin player. He loved the violin. And yeah, he was pretty good. So if he didn't play the violin, maybe we didn't have the nuclear power because, you know, the language is very important to think, think, think. When you think something, you're using the language. Okay. Now I'm talking in English, so then the, I'm thinking in English, but uh, the, after a while, everything automatically translated into the... Yeah, I, I look at the question answer. Well, wow, so, so much writing. But anyway, all right, so then the, uh, uh, I'm uh, from Japan, so then the, I used to Japanese. And then when I think hard, I'm thinking in Japanese like mathematics, everything in the Japanese, okay? So then the, uh, you're using your language to think. So the language ability is very important for the thinking. That's the, another way music can affect. Okay, uh, music can make you stronger, make you stronger. No fear, no pain. Yeah, those people, you know, the, they don't feel pain because they prepare themselves with the music and dancing. And then the, even you can see, they don't breathe too much because of the music. Music can change the uh, uh, you know, blood vessel, uh, blood flow all in the skin. And then they don't have much of the breathing. Like this, right? So yeah, that's it. Painful, but she don't feel it, right? Because of this music, and then the, uh, to kill the pain, we used to use uh, uh, soothing music. That was wrong. We have to use like very, very rhythmical music. So then the uh, maybe the den dentist they start using. They should start using like this uh, rhythmical music. Maybe this is too much, but. Uh, uh, you know, some pop song with, uh, uh, yeah, dance music, ABBA or something. Those are the very nice uh, uh, to prevent or keep you uh, from feeling pain. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Boost your immune system. Somebody might say, no way. Why immune system? Let me explain. The uh, When we expose the stress, the we release the cortisol. Cortisol is a hormone, stress hormone, and then the try to, you know, uh, uh, prevent the uh, effect of the stress. But uh, on the other side, maybe the, uh, sometimes you use the cortisol for the, uh, you know, treatment for the inflammation. Yeah, that means the cortisol does reduce the, your immune response. Okay. Yeah. So then the, if you get stressed, the cortisol level shoot up and then the, your immune response suppressed by this cortisol. But the music can suppress such a, a increase of the cortisol. That means the music can preserve your immune response even after the, such a stress. Okay, music can repress the drug. Drug means the uh, drug, drug, illegal drug. Yeah, so music is the drug. Already I mentioned that the music acting on the same part of the brain, reward system. And then the, also the, now we know that we are using the sound to regulate your brain wave. Uh, 
like this way. So then the, if we have the very close, maybe 440, 442 the sound wave, and then the, we can see, hear the, the, the you know, two hertz, one, one, one things. Yeah, you can hear the one, 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 one. Yeah, so using those, we can control the brain wave. Put the one sound to the right ear, put another sound to the left ear. And then in the brain, you're gonna, uh, you know, merge those sound and make those, uh, one, 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 those sound. And using those, we can create the, uh, like alpha wave or even the uh, theta wave. If we make it to the uh, very strong, like a, uh, uh, you know, beta or gamma wave, then they, uh, yeah, that's the drug right there. And then the music can repair your brain damage. Brain damage. That's weird. Okay, so uh, I'm a stem cell researcher. This is the human brain cells uh, derived from the human stem cells. You can see the astrocyte. That's the glia. And then the tiny cells moving along the edge of the astrocyte. Those are the neurons. So our brain is moving like this all the time. Although this is in vitro, and then I took the picture every five minutes, but our brain is active. So the first things, uh, 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 canary. Why canary? The bird, that's where we found the stem cell first. This is the first paper, uh, 1993, saying the uh, the bird or the stem cells in the brain. We didn't know that. That's why I started the uh, stem cell research. I tried to fix the Alzheimer, uh, you know, disease with the stem cells. That's what uh, we do. Yeah. So then the birds, they start learning the uh, uh, singing during the spring to attract the uh, females, right? And then the, those birds forget the uh, singing during the summer. Oops. Uh, yeah. So then the, uh, they have the uh, special uh, cells. Here's the stem cells. And then from the stem cells, they create the neurons every spring to learn the music. So uh, the light information comes into the eye and stimulate these cells to differentiate into the neurons. And while that, they listening to somebody else's uh, singing and then learn. And then uh, they make this uh, uh, neural connection every spring. But this connection go away during the summer. So maybe the uh, uh, music can induce the neurogenesis. That's what it is. Increase the stem cells, increase the neurons in your brain. And then the, yeah, the very famous thing is that music can make you smart. Maybe you heard about the Mozart effect. If you give the uh, uh, Mozart music to the kids, they become smart. Baby. Even though they sometimes try to use in the tummy. Well, fetus. Okay. Yeah, but we did some of the study like this. Yeah. Double piano concerto Mozart. And then we give this, uh, uh, you know, uh, music to the our student and then the, we check the frontal lobe function the frontal lobe function increased 50 percent five zero percent after listening this music can you believe it 50 percent we thought the uh, wagner that could uh, you know increase the uh, brain power because the wagner as you may know they have been used by nazi or even a uh, american you know the yeah 
soldier to encourage the soldiers、uh, during the fight. But、uh, we didn't see any effect with the Wagner, zero. While the Mozart can increase 50% of your brain function. Okay. And then the interesting thing is that uh, uh, already I introduced the、uh, song in the Pachinko Parlor. That song we just、uh, gave to the student. They never listen to、uh, Japanese music, but、uh, their brain r e s p o n d Their brain increased the power like 30%. So, the definitely music can increase your brain power. But maybe the, you don't want to listen to、uh, such a music with the lyrics while you're doing the homework or something. Or uh, uh, hard thinking, because already I showed that the、uh, music using the、uh, language center, but the, the language lyrics use the left side and music use the right hand side. So your brain could be occupied, and then、uh, it's not good for your、uh, you know, the,、uh, work. Okay, so. Next thing is the、uh, cure the Parkinson s disease. Cure.、Hmm. All right, so then the top brain、uh, is the Parkinson s brain, fresh cut,、uh, post mortem brain, okay? And the bottom is the fresh cut of the control brain. You can see this brown deposition. Those are the cells lost in Parkinson s disease. That's the, uh, uh, the cells sending a signal. To this、uh, Grobus p a r i d a s and the putamen. And the putamen is the center for the rhythm. And then you need the rhythm to do many things. Yeah.、Uh, you can behave, you can work, you can do things with the rhythm. So then, the, without the rhythm, very difficult to do. And then the Parkinson patient, they lost the ability to create the rhythm. In the putamen. That's the problem with them. So, the Parkinson s patient, they have the hard time walking, start walking, and then the walking. Yeah. You know, he wanted to continue to walk, but a lot of difficult, right? Okay. And then you can see the rigidity in his hand here. Okay. But he's going to put the music、uh, pretty soon. Let's see. Yeah. I don't have the ability to change here somehow. Maybe because of the point. Ah,、uh, yeah, because of the point. Okay. Now he put the music. Very rhythmical music. See? Almost Parkinsonism is gone. Because his、uh, brain started using the rhythm. From the outside, he doesn't need to make a rhythm in, their brain,、uh, in his brain. So he's using this music as a rhythm. So, music, definitely, but the temporary cure the Parkinson's disease. So then the hospital started using this.、Uh, you know, the Parkinson s patient、uh, get together and do the c o l u s Or something like that. All right, so then the last thing is the uh, uh, memory. So this is the normal brain, and then the, this red part of the uh, brain uh, is active, picking up the glucose. This is PET scan. Okay, and then the mild cognitive impairment, the, you can see this language center s t a r t losing the、uh, signal. And then the Alzheimer's、uh, disease patient, almost gone. So, 
our、uh, memory resides everywhere in the brain, not just one place. And then the, if you give the certain music, which you're listening when you are, you had a good time, good feeling, good emotion. Yeah, like this、uh, Hotel California is good for me. Eagles. I love it. Because, you know, but when I go to the ocean、uh, drive with my girlfriend and switch on the radio, and this kind of music came out. That's how this music c o n n e c t with the emotion. And then the, such an emotional memory never f a d e out. And then using those emotional、uh, memory, okay, already I told you that we put the、uh, things everywhere in the brain, but the problem with the Alzheimer's disease or the、uh, senile dementia, they lost the function to retrieve. We forgot. Where we store those things. But the, using the、uh, music, we can recall the things and then connect each other, put together, and then start to make sense. Yeah. So then the,、uh, maybe I can start from here. So this is the late stage of Alzheimer's. Oops. Late stage of the Alzheimer's patient. You know, she tried to reach out to him, but、uh, he never responded.、Uh, very depressed, in other words. Yeah, no much response. But uh, the, if we give the,、uh, such a music, particularly the music he was listening when he was young, having a good time. And then the, those music recall his memory and increase the arousal. And then you can see the amazing effect of the, such a music. This is what you see. After just listening the five minutes of those music. See, the, his eye o p e n up. That means that his allows are going on. I'm giving you the feeling of love. No, no man, figure right now the world needs to come into music singing. You got beautiful music in. Beautiful, oh, lovely. And、uh, I feel the band of love. Yeah, so that's the end of this、uh, lecture. And then if you have any question, I can、uh, more happy to answer. Dr. Sagaya, that was fascinating. It, it, I, I remember being intrigued when we met with you early on and you, you gave us, you hit some of the high points for us, but it's just, it was fascinating. Thank you so much for the presentation. You're welcome. I'm going to share some of the questions that have come through already, and then I'll be mindful of the other ones that come through as we're going. And these are in no particular order. Um, somebody asked when anxiety causes a person to get stuck in a certain physical response, can music reset the body's response? Yeah. So then the anxiety, uh, uh, many of the anxiety coming from the amygdala function, right? And then the not necessarily the soothing music, but also the、uh, some sort of rhythmical fun music. Uh, for me, like a Mozart.、Uh, for somebody else, something different. But the, those music can、uh, reset. And then, the, yeah. And、I'll、also, the, the people say that the、uh, earworm, some of the music is stick, stuck to your ear. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, some of the music phrase、mm -hmm. stick, stuck to your ear. And then, if you find those music and then the fun music, that may be the, another good way to you know, forget about those anxiety、uh, r e s p o n s e、mm -hmm. Always, you know, like my father.、Uh, yeah, he passed away a while ago, but、uh, the, you know, when he、uh, in the hard time, I mean,、uh, 
something happened to him, he started uh, uh, singing. <laughs> Always. That's the way we recognize, okay, he has uh, some problem. So then the, uh, that kind of things also might help. Mm -hmm. That's my feeling is. Terrific. So what you mentioned earlier, and I was especially interested in this too, that because I have a three-month-old granddaughter, you mentioned the differences between dissonance and consonance uh -huh. in music. And someone asked, if you could explain that a little more, what is dissonance, what is consonance, or maybe give some examples. Yeah, uh, so then the, uh, okay, uh, do, mi, so, right, do, mi, the little bit far uh, away, the sound, that's the consonants. Uh, the good harmony, right, do, mi, so is a good harmony. And then, the, but uh, if you have a do le or a do sharp or something, and then, like I showed you, that uh, uh, that's going to hit each other too much. That's mm -hmm. the dissonance. And then, the uh, and a good example is that mm, more uh, current classical music. I hate it. I mean, uh, such a composer using uh, lots of dissonance. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds like a crazy. It's mm -hmm. not going to make sense. That kind of thing, uh, music, uh, the sound is a dissonance. And then the other brain already knew that from the birth. That's why they, such a baby, they start to, you know, uh, responding those dissonance and consonance very early. That's what I said. So mm -hmm. put the baby in the middle mm -hmm. and then they put the speaker, two speakers on the uh, right and the left, and then the, put the dissonance on the right, consonance to the left. Baby always face to the consonance. You can do that. You can test that. I did that to my son mm -hmm. when he was baby, and then he did. So, <laughs> you know, the, uh, that's the uh, things. And then the, from the birth, we like the consonants, we dislike the dissonance. Mm -hmm. But uh, they uh, already I, uh, say that if we have too much consonants all the way in the music, that's kind of boring. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, you might fall in sleep. Right? So then the, that's the reason the, uh, the uh, composer putting the sound dissonance in an effective way. Terrific. That's that's the answer enough. Mm -hmm. So so this is a a, a a a simple one, and this is more about you and your research. Several people wanted to know if you ever collaborate with music therapists or have done any research with yeah. music therapists. Yeah, that's that's the because the, my major is the uh, uh, Alzheimer. So then the, I wanted to uh, have a cure for the Alzheimer, and then the, we are getting somewhere. But anyway, so then the uh, two ways to think. One way, ah, uh, yeah, I collaborated with those people giving the uh, music to the Alzheimer patient, uh, particularly the music. Those Alzheimer patient uh, loved here when they were young mm -hmm. with his girlfriend or her boyfriend or something having a good time, mm -hmm. right? So those music we put into the, you know, uh, USB chip and then gave to those uh, patients. Uh, we did a lot and then the, even the local and then the nationwide. And then we saw a tremendous response, tremendous. You know, the Alzheimer patient, when they were uh, in the late stage, they become depressed. Mm -hmm. or become uh, so anxiety, you know, start uh, uh, upset easily. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, uh, after giving those music, all those uh, behavior corrected. So, yeah, uh, definitely. And then the uh, uh, our student also, uh, she did that for her grandmother who had mm -hmm. uh, dementia. And then the, my students say that, oh, that was wonderful. My grandmother uh, totally changed, you know. 
Um, although the grandmother still uh, couldn't recognize her much, but uh, her behavior much better mm -hmm. and then the easier to communicate. That's what uh, she said. And then in the class, she showed all the, you know, the record of the mm -hmm. uh, uh, change in the video. That's what uh, uh, we had. Fascinating. There, there are a couple of questions that are, and they're coming through rapid fire now. They were slow coming during the presentation because everybody was so engaged, and now they're just really coming in. A couple of them are are kind of getting at the same thing because we always, uh, and 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 I'm likely in the older uh, crowd and on the call, but uh, I, I remember growing up people saying that, that rock music was going to do all these terrible things to us, and hip-hop music was going to do all this ter these terrible things. So a couple of people are asking, is there really any evidence to suggest that uh, yeah. heavy metal okay. music, what, talk yeah. about that for a minute. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, believe it or not, heavy metal music is good. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, that prevent the suicidal or uh, people sometimes, and then the yeah heavy metal musician they play the classical music in the heavy metal way too. I love those things. All right, and then the uh, rock music isn't too bad. Yeah, I think it's good. But the rock music, this is a, a study already kind of established. The the people grew up with the rock music. Uh, they become aggressive. Uh, that's kind of inference uh, they might get. Yeah, obvious. Uh, obviously, the music can affect the people's, you know, the uh, way of thinking. Uh, that's the environment. So, yeah. But uh, I would say the heavy metal isn't too bad. And then the, I was in the psychiatry department in Chicago. And then the, we sometimes use heavy metal to help the, uh, you know, so much depressed, so much, you know, suicidal people. The people thought uh, the other way around, but uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was thinking exactly the same thing. It seems counterintuitive uh, and, and just, again, fascinating. So several questions, and, and I'm going to do my best to try and, 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 and lump them together um, in a way that will make sense to you, I hope. Several people are asking about the connection between music and memories. Someone mm -hmm. asked, does it really help you retrieve the memory or is it just helping you recall a feeling? Um, and then someone else is asking about music actually helping to bring back lost memories. Yeah. Uh, yes, it will. Okay. So then, the uh, I slightly mentioned that the uh, uh, memory connect with the uh, uh, emotion never fade out. If you have the uh, emotional memory, that's you know very difficult to lose. Mm -hmm. And then the, those things, uh, uh, you know, even the certain moment of the memory, but the, such emotional memory. Not all the time. This time emotional, this time emotional, this time emotional. And then the, the people in the, without Alzheimer, they can connect all those things together. So then the, we can recall the quite old memory and then so on. Okay, that's one. And then the, uh, but the music can enhance the say, recall of the emotional memory. Not just the music. Mm -hmm. Another uh, way to recall is the scent, sense of smell. Mm -hmm. So the uh, sense of smell is very close to the uh, area of the brain, a little bit the inside of the temporal lobe, right? Mm -hmm. And then the, that part of the brain connecting those emotion and then the uh, uh, sense of the scent and then the sound and then the other, you know, the sense together and then the, uh, making those memory. And then, yes, so uh, yeah, that's why they, uh, the ladies or even the uh, male, they uh, wear perfume. And that's the way they give the such emotional or the very strong uh, impression. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, other people, uh, you know, don't forget about them. 
Okay, so then the, that's one. Another one is the like a, a Alzheimer patient. Still, he can play piano. That's uh, sometimes happen. Mm -hmm. That because the two things. One is the this uh, emotional memory recall. Another one is those uh, 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 finger memorized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then the uh, without the uh, without this uh, uh, emotional memory calling back, of course the even the, just the finger itself doesn't move. Uh, but the put together, that's the way uh, he can play piano. And then the, this finger memory that reside in the uh, cerebellum, mm -hmm. not in the uh, frontal lobe. And then cerebellum memory is like uh, riding the bicycle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once you get it, you never forget it. That kind of thing. So that's the uh, uh, finger memory. And then the, uh, but the finger memory needs uh, some trigger. That's the emotional memory together with. So then the music can trigger those things. Uh, definitely the music can improve the such a cognition and prevent uh, getting the dementia. That's also already known. Mm -hmm. uh, I told you that uh, music use the temporal role, which is the language yeah. center. That's part of the brain, the layman like me. We are losing the thickness every day by aging. Thickness means that we are losing the neurons. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the musician, they never lose the thickness. Yeah, because really? uh, they, yeah, they train, training those part of the brain very well by learning the memory. So uh, not just listening to the memory doesn't mm -hmm. help much, but uh, if you play instrument, that's the uh, things. So then the, maybe you can recall that uh, quite a few uh, conductors, they don't get the dementia and mm -hmm. then the, they live like a 90s, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just a clean memory, clean uh, brain. Because um, two things. One is that they express themselves in the music, almost uh, playing the instrument. Mm -hmm. That's important. And then the, that stimulates the, those language center and then the, they don't lose the thickness of the language center. On the top of that, conductor does the, you know, good, not hard exercise. Hard exercise is bad for you, mm -hmm. but the, you know, a little bit exercise, cardio exercise mm -hmm. all the time. So that's the uh, reason they can live long. Wow. And that, that goes directly to a question someone had put in earlier about the, that you had talked about the effect of, of listening to music, but what about the actual musician? And, yeah. and, 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 and I'm assuming what you're talking about with the conductor is the same as for the musician themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the violinist, my wife is violinist. Unfortunately, uh, she cannot be here today, but, uh, you know, uh, when we look at our, uh, those musicians' brain, very interesting. Already I told you that they don't lose the uh, temporal thickness, longest center thickness. Uh, and also when they're listening to the music, the visual cortex light up. Why visual cortex? You know, the, uh, mm -hmm. I showed you that, I showed you that the brain scan showing the temporal lobe lights up. Mm -hmm. when you're listening to music, but uh, the musician, they use the occipital cortex, which is a, a you know, visual cortex. Maybe they're opening the uh, music score in front of them when they're listening to music, they turn the page one by one. So then the visual things they are creating. So we t we musician's brain so much different. We, we talk frequently at NAMI about how complex the brain is and how hard brain science is and why it's so difficult to find uh, specific treatments for mental illness. And, and listening to you today, it, it, and I know I keep saying that's fascinating, but it is. And I'm just reminded again of just how complex the brain is on so many different levels. Mm -hmm. in in wellness as well as in illnesses it's it's just it's complex and things you don't yeah. think about being connected 
Um, something that you just, something that you said made me think of another question someone had asked earlier. My brain seems to continue to create music even after I turn the music off. Is that normal or typical? Yeah, uh, that's normal and then the typical. Uh, depend on the music. Okay. Uh, if I listen to a lot of music and then turn off, huh, I never think about those music. But the uh, you know if uh, I was listening the uh, beautiful music which I like, and then they you know even turn off the music such a things. Well, already I told you that the ear warm, stick mm -hmm. to my ear, right? Mm -hmm. And then the uh, sometimes I do the humming and so on. That's very normal, and then the, that's the uh, typical brain function. If you dislike, forget it. But if you like it stick to their brain. That's mm -hmm. happening. Wow. Excuse me. <laughs> and and I, I recall, and partially because the music was startling, the percussion, someone asked the question about the differences between rhythmic music without an actual melody and the mm -hmm. impact on that versus melodic music. Um, but but I, I I seem to recall from what you were saying the rhythmic the, the the it all has an impact. Yeah. So then the uh, of course they depend. You know the uh, rhythmic things that stimulate your uh, pleasure center, mm -hmm. and also the uh, putamine. That's where the uh, you know dopamine uh, signal going. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in the putamine, your brain making the rhythm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. And then the, uh, those rhythm, uh, rhythmical things uh, give you the pressure. So then the, like a, a strong drum. That's why the, the ancient, uh, you know, all, all time people, they drum before the, the war. Mm -hmm. All right. They don't uh, do the beautiful music before a war or something. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, difference. But on the other hand, the when you uh, wants to stimulate your hippocampus or something, uh, think something, or the uh, hmm, what can I say, the more high level of thinking or something, mm -hmm. then the rhythm doesn't help. Melodious things gonna help. Interesting. So, so it, if if I'm hearing you correctly, it's almost like the more complex, mm -hmm. whatever it is that 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 you're dealing with, or that you're the the more melody helps rather than just the. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Goodness. Yeah. Several. So, people, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Now another example is that. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, slightly off, but uh, the uh, when you show the. Uh, all the you know, uh, boys picture to the girls in the city mm -hmm. and then ask them to put the score. They might say like a five, six, four, because the midi core, right? But uh, if you do the same thing after uh, those people uh, did the bungee jumping or something, everybody put the score 10 because their brain releases the dopamine a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they got excited. Mm -hmm. That's why they say, oh, 10, 9, 10. So much different. Mm -hmm. okay. And then the, that things happen after listening the music, rhythmical music. Because the rhythmical music increases your dopamine mm -hmm. in the pressure center. Okay. So when you, uh, that's why I say that uh, uh, when you date, mm -hmm. don't put the melodious, melodious, music put the rhythmical music mm -hmm. then the you know the, the girl look at you oh you're so good <laughs> nice. so we've we've gotten several different questions but related to schizophrenia specifically uh -huh. you you several times you talked about alzheimer's you talked about dementia you talked about depression but 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 someone has specifically asked can you talk a little bit more 
about schizophrenia and music. Someone had a question in there earlier, did you say music could cure schizophrenia? Um, and, and I don't think you said music could cure anything. What I think I heard you say was it can alleviate the symptoms for a while. I remember the, the guy. Who temporary. Who temporary, temporary. Temporary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can you talk yeah. about schizophrenia and music specifically? Okay. Uh, schizophrenia uh, having a, a more dopamine in the brain to start with. So using the music to reduce the dopamine. That's the things we need to think about. That's the very difficult task. So, yeah, the even if we put the calm down, very slow tempo music, the you know, the production of dopamine never reduced. So mm -hmm. then the, that's you know I hate to say that. That's very difficult a uh, task. Only one thing, though, I can say is that the lullaby might help. Hmm. You know the lullaby, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, everybody knows mm -hmm. lullaby. Mm -hmm. So then the lullaby is the speed of what? What kind of speed? The tempo is uh, like a 60, 70, mm -hmm. right? Not mm -hmm. 120. Obviously, not the hundred. Okay, that's the speed of the heartbeat when the mother in the calm situation. Ah. Uh. So then, the uh, when your baby in mother's tummy, you're listening those uh, heartbeat, mm -hmm. and then the, if the mother heartbeat is uh, 60, 70, then ah, uh, you're okay. Mm -hmm. But the, the uh, that's why the lullaby always does speed. And then the, sometimes you tap the baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you uh, try to put them into sleep or something, that's the same thing. When you're that's trying to speed. soothe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the same reason uh, schizophrenic patient, still they have a, a memory when they were in the fetus, I mean, uh, in the mother's tummy. Mm -hmm. So then the, uh, that might help, but again, very difficult, and then the temporary things. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, pushing up the dopamine, easier. Pushing down is not that easy. So, mm -hmm. unfortunate. So here, there are a couple of questions about, uh, um, there have been several questions about specific music and specific disorders versus just music and, and mental health mm -hmm. symptoms in general. So know that those questions are out there somewhere. This is one though that 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 may have a an easier answer. I, I don't know if that's the right word, a more concrete answer. You mentioned music uh specifically being helpful with decreasing suicidal symptoms uh, with people. Um, could music be used to control anger management? Could it be preventive in acute management uh, of behaviors or management yeah. of acute behaviors? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the anger uh, things. Uh, before the anger, maybe the brain wave shifted to the, uh, you know, the beta wave or the gamma wave mm -hmm. from the alpha. Alpha is a coming down, sort of, right? So then the uh, that's the reason that... Uh, if we use the binaural sound, which is the, I, I mentioned that like a wow, wow, wow sound. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, put that sound in the background of the music and then the, give to the certain person, uh, you know, we can control the brain wave. And then the, that's the way we can increase more alpha wave. That's the very strong way to control the anger, mm -hmm. soothing down. But anyway, the uh, quite a few music the uh, can uh, without even those uh, uh, binaural sound uh, music can create the more alpha wave mm -hmm. to start with. Ah, yeah, we are using the uh, those music uh, therapy for the. the uh, I forgot. <laughs> I'm getting Alzheimer's, so I, I lost uh, sometimes word. <laughs> right. 
Yeah. It's so, it's, uh, so yeah. several we have so many more questions, and I I prefer to look at it that our 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 uh, CD ROM is getting full. You know that's what oh. it is. That that's what okay. happens to us as 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 we we lose those those quick memories. Several questions about autism, about music mm-hmm. and autism spectrum disorder. And and related to that, a couple of different questions have come through about autism and sensitivity to music. Sensitivity. Mm-hmm. Being hyper, people with mental illness or with autism being hypersensitive to music. Uh, two mm-hmm. different people wrote in to see if, to ask if that was a myth or if that really was a thing. Uh, that could happen, depend on the serotonin contents. Serotonin. serotonin. Huh? Serotonin. Serotonin, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Serotonin is upstream of the dopamine, controlling the dopamine as well. And then the uh, uh, the autism uh, subjects, some of them are very low serotonin. Some of them are uh, still the high serotonin. Maybe those high serotonin uh, autism patient might be more sensitive to the music. Uh, unfortunately, they, we haven't done any study. Just uh, that's my hypothesis. Mm-hmm. Maybe I can mm-hmm. test that. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the, now we are uh, uh, doing the study for the autism uh, in this area. And then the, we are checking the serotonin level in the brain using the peripheral or, you know, sample. Terrific. So we've got we we don't have much time left. I want to want to ask a few uh, just to give you an idea of the conversations that are going on and coming through in the the Q and A. Several people have shared their own experiences with mm-hmm. music and what a difference it's made for them. And we've had several people chime in about being part of drum circles. You know, being part of 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 different groups that get together. Mm-hmm. and 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 share music so you're really no pun intended striking a chord with a lot of the people that are on the call um mm-hmm. some at least one person has said they would love to have your wife on the next time you join us <laughs> so that, that yeah. she could play the violin yeah and 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 what's your favorite music let's let's close with this question what's your you mentioned hotel california yeah um, that's and, i love it you mentioned that one, but but do you have? And I'm going to take it a step further. Do you have a particular go to music um, for different things, or is is Hotel California just all? Yeah, uh, yeah, you know the another music I love is the Bach. the The one I uh, put into this presentation that's the Chacon. That's the uh, partita number two, last movement. And then the, uh, that's the music I love it. Uh, yeah, before I met my wife, I liked it. But the, after I met my wife, I love it. Because uh, uh, she, her chacon is, I would say, the best chacon in the world. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm sure you are not objective, but I bet you're right. I completely, I, I don't doubt that. If I remember correctly, you play an instrument as well. I can't remember if you said that in this presentation or if maybe it's something we talked about in the prep meetings. Do I remember correctly? Uh, yeah, I, I, I just have fun with the uh, musical instrument, mm-hmm. but uh, the I usually play computer with her. <laughs> you know, the, I make the MIDI sound mm-hmm. and then the, I record uh, from the Steinway uh, piano and using those sound to play MIDI. And that way, the uh, that's almost like a real uh, sound. And then the, on the top of that, I put the LR, the human. Uh, we cannot play like a robot. Mm-hmm. You know that these two fingers you can move very fast, mm-hmm. but you cannot move these two finger fast. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so uh, because the these two fingers sharing the uh, ligament here. Okay, so then the uh, that's 
those things, if I, uh, yeah, in, I introduce to the MIDI, making the, some error, then sounds like a, a people praying. That's, that's kind of that's kind of way I'm doing. Yeah, you know, like this uh, picture, mm -hmm. the paint. That's my hobby mm -hmm. too. Did you paint that? Yeah, yeah, it's oil paint. Oh my goodness! Oil paint. The girl with the pearl. The girl yeah, with yeah. the pearl earring. That's mm -hmm. again. I keep saying fascinating, but genuinely, this afternoon has been fascinating, and I think it's demonstrated by the number of people who've stayed on for the Q&A, and we had almost 500 people on the, the webinar. So this is a yeah. one of our most popular topics, and I just can't thank you enough for sharing your oh. time with us. If I, I have a, a one more minute, maybe uh -huh. I can share the some uh, interesting facts. Sure. Because I'm in, in Florida. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So then the, you never ever want to pray be flat in the swamp of Florida. Do you know why? Why? I'm guessing it has something to do with an alligator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, you get the attack by the male alligator. Now, see, who knew we were going to get that useful fact this afternoon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The, actually, the, the people did that uh, such a study. And then the, they prayed the cello, beef rat, and then the uh, alligator start become very aggressive. My. Because that B flat sound, that level, the male alligator uh, makes while they are mating. Mm -hmm. So then the other alligator thought, oh, somebody doing the fun, somebody doing something. So then the, they start to uh, become so aggressive. Yeah. So that's the another fact. But again, fascinating. I can't, can't say it enough. Thank you so right. much. Dr. Sagaya, and if you will click to the next slide, please. Okay. Uh, yes. This has just been terrific. Quick reminder that that Nami's book, You Are Not Alone, is now available and out there and made has made several of the bestseller lists. So encourage you to, to look for it or learn more about it if you're interested. And then if you will go to the next slide, please. Terrific. Again, remember, you're not alone. NAMI's Ask the Expert series uh, is not intended to give you medical advice, but it's it's we we want to share all the information that we can with you so people can you can make the best decisions possible for yourself. We're able to provide these free to participants because of generous sponsors who continue to support the work of NAMI. And we want to thank any of those of you that are on the call. And if you will go to the next slide, please. I don't have that. Any. May be it. That that may be it. We we usually have the one coming up about the next Ask the Expert webinar. Oh, we I, I didn't get that. Sorry. Well, that's okay. We don't have those scheduled yet, and I wasn't paying attention to my deck, or I would have would have known that. We will yeah. be launching the series again, continuing the series in 2023. So we want to encourage you to please stay tuned for announcements about upcoming webinars. Um, we want to give a huge shout out before we before we end. I would be remiss if I didn't thank the the group of staff that are behind the scenes that helped with moderating the Q and A, that helped you with any technical issues that you had. We have senior producer Hagen Stouffer, Jessica Walthall, Letitia Enos, Christina Botts, Chelsea Cavanaugh. Dawn Gritman, Zyra Correa, and Devana Eccles. I want to thank each of them for helping us make this happen. And, and what a wonderful presentation to close out 2022 with. Can't thank you enough, Dr. Sagaya. Thank you. Thank, thank you. And we wish all of you on the call happy holidays and a healthy and peaceful 2023. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.